so wait. It just blew up. Yeah, that certainly seemed to be planned. Yeah, but doesn't that seem counterintuitive? <laughs> yeah, you know what? Yeah, I mean, counterintuitive is a good word. I mean, I think when you put people on there, you won't say, oh, it blew up. <laughs> yeah! I don't, I don't understand. Okay, so the reason why this is so important, and it'll become more important when it actually goes to the moon and returns, and then the next step is with people, um, this gives the, us the ability to launch things into space at a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of the cost. Okay. This is the first step to a moon base. This is the first step to Star Trek. This is the first step to a base, a permanent base on the moon where we can make our own fuel go up. Get everybody up there, build gigantic ships because you won't have to take them out of our atmosphere anymore. So you can build gigantic ships, fuel them on the moon, and head on out. That's that's <laughs> that's the reason head why. Head on out? Like anywhere, really. You'd be yeah. able to explore in, a, in ways that we You're, haven't they're going conceived to, the, of, really. They are going to use nuclear power, I would imagine— uh, up on the moon and they will build these ships to be a nuclear power plant i mean things go oh, wrong environmentalists will shut that down you can't really? have you can't have nuclear power what about the moon's environment yeah right uh so they will they will build it to be nuclear powered or some other sustainable you know constantly renewable kind of uh energy once you put that up on the moon and you get all the components and you build something, you can be constant voyagers. Hmm. Wow. I mean, because I, I don't follow this stuff at all. I, I really don't. I mean, I know I, every time Elon Musk, you know, launches something, it takes over Twitter for approximately two hours. And that's about my level of following it. But this is what's the innovation here? The innovation is the size. No, the innovation... Is this the biggest one ever built, apparently? No, it's... Or mo most powerful ever built? Yes, most powerful. This is bigger than the Saturn V that launched uh, Apollo. Um, the, uh, the, the way that it can come back, those engines and everything else are so expensive. They just blew it up, okay? <laughs> NASA used to just lose them in the, in the water, Yeah. okay? But you can't use them ever again. This is reusable. Not this one. Not this one. <laughs> so it's reusable. Yeah. So you can just refuel it. And it is it is able to have a turnaround of like three hours. So it could launch things into space. One of them could launch something into space, come back down, land on the platform, refuel, reload, put another payload on it, relaunch again. Okay, hey, that's, 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 you never had that. It's incredible. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, Apollo 13, it was the anniversary, I think, of Apollo 13 making it back to Earth um, this week. And uh, Apollo 13, I mean, they, there is no, there's no help coming. You're stranded on the moon, you're stranded on the moon. You're in space, you're in space. Um, up until we had the space station, we have to, if there's something wrong, we can hitch a ride with another country to get up into space, but we don't have the ability to launch overnight. Here, let's go. This does. This will take um, what it costs per pound. I don't know what it used to cost, but it was really expensive, really expensive per pound in the tens of thousands of dollars. You, you launch a s satellite, you're paying a lot of money per pound. Okay. Per pound or probably per ounce? It's, it's per ounce, but per pound. Um, let's just say that per ounce, I, I'm making this number up, but it just let's just say it was in the tens of thousands because I'm not sure where that goes. It's now like, I think like 20, hang on, I looked up what the current or what the price will be, what they're projecting. Uh, it'll be 57 cents per ounce. <laughs> That's a savings. That's a, yeah. that's a savings. Yeah. I can't even ship mail at that rate. I at this know. Point. <laughs> I know. So now you can take all of the infrastructure that you need up to the moon. 
at a reasonable price changes everything. This is hmm. this is a remarkable day. I was just listening to uh, the uh, All In podcast with David Sachs and his friends. Yeah, and they have been on this AI uh, rant for the last couple of weeks. And these guys are really, really smart. And it's weird because it feel I feel like they're just discovering some of this stuff. Like, wow, it's really changing things quickly. And you're like, yeah. And today, last week, they were saying we should have some sort of government regulation. And David Sachs and a couple others were like, no, no, no. Uh, I don't think it's, you know, it's too soon. And one of the other guys said, too soon. What are we waiting for? What do we wait at the, at the rate of change, what are we waiting, a month? And uh, in this week, it started with one of the guys going, okay, it's time now. We have to have regulation. That was seven days. The reason why he said it is yesterday, yesterday, somebody put a chat bot onto a task to be a personal assistant. And the things that it can do, it's Everything in your life, everything in your life, the things that it can do, because it reached out to other bots and then started saying, oh, I, uh, I need to send letters and organize mail. That bot, you can do it. No, no human was involved. Uh, I got to go find that technology. Oh, I can get it here. So that's part of it. I need airline booking. There's another bot out here. I got it here. And it. It created itself. That was yesterday. And David Sachs said, uh, we, are, we used to measure um, giant leaps in years or decades. For instance, how many years did it take to go from version one of the iPhone to version two? It's been out since 2007. What are we up to? Version 11? 13 or 14? Okay. It's been around. 13 or 14. He said, we used to measure in decades, then in years. We now are measuring in weeks and days. And I said out loud as I was listening to them, it's about to become ours. It will become major uh, improvements, major discoveries, major advances in technology in hours. You will, we are going to have a time where something like we just saw the, you know, spaceship lifting off will be like, Oh my gosh, I can't believe that that's what that, that just happened. The next day we won't be talking about it and not because there's some political scandal but because there's something even more incredible the next day we're just at the beginning you are living in the most remarkable time of human history right now you want to be you want to be positive about things i mean you know there's really things you really you will worry about you know as we cross that bridge uh, and that bridge is coming sooner than anybody thinks but uh, right now, the possibility is truly endless. You're about to think it, and it becomes. We, we are two years away from, there's no Pixar. You don't need Pixar. You'll be able to go, I love The Simpsons. Hey, uh, have Bart comment on this and... And Homer, he has this point of view on this topic of today's news. Enter. Done. You got a half hour Simpsons episode. Okay. It's going to change everything. Everything. Because that's just the entertainment side. That's not the side that's making, you know, billions and billions and trillions of dollars. Whole world's about to change. It's really exciting.